Lloyd Vance covers the NFL, does a great job as a uh, contributing writer and reporter NFL Network. Kind enough to join us for a couple moments on a uh, Friday. And uh, good to catch up with you, Lloyd. How you been, pal? Uh, doing great, Q. Always glad to talk to you. Absolutely. Great day out here, though. Yeah, but. yeah, it is. It is. I know. Uh, I think uh, the Skins have actually canceled their mini camp from today. Just got a call on that. Uh, pouring pretty hard uh, in D.C. All right, before we get into the Bradford, the Wentz, um, let's kind of uh, trail back a little bit to the NFL draft. Uh, wh- what what was your biggest surprise? What was your biggest takeaway? It's so early to grade teams. I'm not a big fan of grading the teams, but just for fodder, for argument's sake and radio sense, what what team stood out in your in your eyes that you walked away saying, you know what, they kind of addressed a lot of their needs? Yeah, I, I always like what the Baltimore Ravens done. Uh, you know, Ozzy Newsom does a great job running his uh, department along with Eric DeCastro. They, they really knew their needs, and, and they went after the guys that they needed to to replenish that defense and, and just get that team more viable. So they did a nice job. I thought that the Cleveland Browns, by just sheer volume, 14 picks, the most in NFL in, uh, in a draft in some time, um, they brought in a lot of players that are going to help themselves out and then it's all going to be, though, Q, everyone looks at the quarterback class yep. and how are these quarterbacks going to turn out. I think the Rams won at golf. He was their guy. And then, of course, we're, I know we're going to talk about Wentz some more, but, you know, the Eagles' whole draft is going to be predicated on Wentz and whether he is a guy that can step up. Another team I thought brought in a quarterback and did a nice job was the Dallas Cowboys. They sat and waited, and they got Dak Prescott later on in the draft, but they also got Ezekiel Elliott, a guy that helped them out. Uh, let's stick with the Cowboys for a moment. We have a lot of Cowboys fans in this area. Let's appease them for a couple of moments. I know uh, Jerry Jones' son basically came out and said, look, Des Bryant, you might want to come back uh, this year in shape. And I know Bryant dealt with some injuries. Th- thoughts on that? And then the Cowboys as a whole with Romo, because Romo is a guy that's been banged up year in and year out. It just seems as though he's a great quarterback. He's a talented quarterback. Uh, he can never stay healthy, at least over the last several years. I still think last year, if Brian and Romo don't go down, the Cowboys are going to run away with the NFC East. But going into this season, I mean, I'm sure the health of those two players has to be uh, on the top of every Cowboys' minds right now, because if they go, the whole team goes. You're correct. And and they, they have a great offensive line that's going to do a great job for them protecting the quarterback and opening some holes for Elliott as he comes in there. But it is going to ride on Romo. He breaks the collarbone twice, and they just couldn't win any games without him. I think they were 1-10 without him. Uh, now they have Kellen Moore behind him. I don't believe in him. Maybe Dax Prescott can step up. Uh, but they're going to need some big plays out of their quarterback position because, let's face it, that defense still is not where it needs to be. I know they brought in some secondary help in the draft, and they're trying to rebuild that along with their linebacking core. But the defense is not doing enough in terms of getting after the quarterback. Uh, I think in the end, Romo can stay healthy. He's 36 years old, totally the key, as you said. Des Bryant, a guy who has to get serious about his craft. They paid him very well, franchise receiver. And this team needs to be the team that almost made it to the NFC Championship mm-hmm. game in 2014. Yeah, and, and 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 Romo played 15 games that year, and the, and he was 12 and three as a starter, and he had a monster season with 34 touchdowns. You're right. Uh, again, a couple of minutes with Lloyd Vance. How about the Giants? Uh, drafting Apple, I thought they were going to go the route with the kid from Florida, uh, the cornerback, but they also addressed some needs. Here, here's the issue with the Giants. They get Shepard. They believe Victor Cruz is coming back 100 percent, even 95, 80 uh, percent for Victor Cruz in the slot is a huge deal for the Giants in that offense. And I know right away people are saying Eli is going to be one of those MVP candidates. They're going to put up a lot of yards. They're going to put up a lot of points. They invested a lot of money in that defense. I cannot make a sound judgment yet until I actually watch these guys in the preseason and then maybe three or four weeks into the league because into the season. If it's the same old nonsense and they can't get to the quarterback and that secondary is exposed, it's a 6-10 and year for the Giants again. Yeah, the Giants are a team, uh, you know, we just don't know who they are right now. And as you said, spent a ton of money on the defense, but bringing in guys like Olivier Vernon, and, and he's going to have to do a job getting after a quarterback. Hopefully J- Jason Pierre-Paul can come back and be the player he once was. We're not sure with that hand injury, what type of guy he'll be, but that defense has to be attacking once again, making Steve Spagnuolo look like a genius. But that back end has to do a better job. As you said, just allowed way too many big plays last year. 
And offensively, they do have the horses. They need to get a running game, a semblance of that. And I think they tried to do that in the draft, bring in some guys. And that offensive line has to do a better job. So, you know, a team that I think is firmly at, towards the top or the middle, upper middle of the NFC East right now, if you rank them, I'd have to put the Giants right in there, along with the Redskins underneath the Dallas Cowboys. I think for some people, they're looking at the Redskins and they're going by – how bad the division was last year. And I think if you're objective about it, when Kirk Cousins needed to make plays for Washington, he flat out balled. He made plays. They got huge offensive production from a bunch of guys. You know, Morris came off that big season. Uh, Jordan Reed deserved that contract extension. Here's a, a tight end that almost amassed 1,000 yards and close to 90 receptions. He had well over uh, 10, 11 touchdowns last year. He's a big playmaker. They've got depth in positions. I'm not sleeping on Washington going into this season. I think people are looking at him as a fluke, but I, I kind of think you saw the real skins last year when they were winning late. They were having those comebacks, and the defense was playing lights out. Yeah, and they're, they're a good team. They're an explosive team, and Kirk Cousins – you know, a lot of people want to give him credit, say he was a caretaker, quarterback position. He can drive the football down the field. And Matt Jones, if he can overcome his fumbling issues, can be a solid running back. That's why they let Morris walk in free agency. So, you know, you bring Doxton in, who's an explosive young receiver, put him with Deshaun Jackson. You know, they can put up points with anybody. The key is Ken Dallas' secondary that they're trying to rebuild. Can they cover these speedy guys for the Redskins? So, great matchup between those two teams as well as the Giants have those explosive outside players. And let's face it, the Eagles, you know, I probably thought they should have looked more defensively in the draft because their defense was just hurting last year. And it's let me ask you a couple questions on the Eagles um, as we start to close it out. F- forget about the, the, the Bradford nonsense. Let's get into these reports now. There might have been uh, some tampering going on uh, with the Eagles and, and, and Goff and Wentz and the fact that if they secured verbal commitments from those quarterbacks that both would accept offers if the Eagles traded up to number two and we know if if they made one of those selections we know that the only team that can speak to a uh, draft pick uh, is the team that has that number all number one overall draft pick we kind of saw this last year uh, with Wentz's current agent with Mariota and and perhaps some tampering the NFL has zero comment right now on this but you speak to a lot of guys uh, in the NFL you speak to a lot of agents is this something commonplace where you can kind of you can kind of do it without getting caught so to speak um, the tampering that is um, what what's your thoughts on that yeah, you're talking about legal tampering, yeah. and that's what the league has brought into the verbiage. You know, they even added that into the uh, free agency period. But it, these agents are always going to talk to general managers that they have an established relationship with. And let's face it, with with the two quarterbacks, Golf and Wentz, having the same agent, you know, that drove a lot of the talks that went on before the draft. So I know the Eagles are working the phones, and, and they did not hide the fact that they liked these two young quarterbacks and they wanted their guy for the future. So. You know, in the end, I, I think they'll investigate, but there's not going to be a lot coming of this. We saw last year they had proof with Jeremy Macklin and the Chiefs, uh, telephone calls, text messages, and then that ended up costing them in terms of draft picks. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what evidence comes out here. All right, I would be remiss if I didn't close out the interview asking you, uh, why does Tom Condon, <laughs> why does Tom Condon keep talking? Because everything he says is an absolute contradiction. I don't know if you heard the opening monologue. Is it just possible that at the end of the day, Tom Condon really doesn't have that much confidence in his client, even though he's throwing himself on the sword, but maybe he just really doesn't believe in Bradford? You you know, and he he has all these (laughs) high-profile quarterbacks that are his his talent, and and let's face it, in terms of his roster, Sam Bradford's not at the top of his roster, and, and I think he should be just glad to get a payday in terms of Bradford, when you look at his career numbers and who he's been throughout his career, he's a guy that's gotten a ton of money, and he's gotten Tom Conner a ton of money at 3% coming over every time. I think Bradford's going to make around $100 million after this season in terms of his career. So, you know, both of them need to realistically look at who Sam Bradford is as a quarterback and stop sulking and just come to work and just be glad that they got $22 million guaranteed coming our way from the Philadelphia Eagles this year. What's the perception from players, current or past, that you've been talking to over the last month or so in regards to the behavior of Sam Bradford? 
Is this a situation yeah, where he'll be welcomed or, hey, just go out and ball or we understand the business side, this, that, the other thing? What are you getting? Yeah, the guys are all saying they understand the business side, but they don't like the fact that he did not want to come in and compete. And, and that's what it's all about. Every guy I talked to said, man, every year it seemed like they were bringing in some hot shot rookie to challenge me in training camp, and I just took them down one by one. And, and that's the kind of mentality that Sam Bradford needs to have. I think he's understanding that. And, and then because, you know, Let's face it, there was not a market out there for him. Nope. I know the Broncos said maybe, mm-hmm. but uh, there just was no market. And he's just made a ton of money, and he's just be glad the money that he's made and perform on the field. Hey, listen, Tom Condon might have confidence, but he's going to keep cashing those commission checks. <laughs> You're darn right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pal. Have a good weekend. We'll talk next week. Appreciate it. All right, cute. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Lloyd Vance.